what should you consider when planning an intervention? The take home message from the snapshot is that there is evidence that online and mobile based interventions can have small but positive effects on a range of health behaviours in the long term. However, it remains unclear as to whether the interventions promote sustained behaviour change. So when planning an intervention, some important things to consider include that online and mobile based interventions need to be used as part of a wider integrated theory based intervention. They should be used alongside other behaviour change tools such as additional communication and support. Another important consideration is that you also need to know your target audience. And this includes, for example, you know, where they are online, what sort of websites they're going to, are they on Facebook, are they on blogs, for example. Your intervention also needs to have clear objectives and that includes things like who you're trying to reach, what sort of engagement you're aiming for and what sort of actions you're wanting participants to take. And finally, one of the biggest take home messages is the importance of evaluation. So our understanding in this area is still growing and especially in the area of mobile devices. So you, you need to make sure that you include um, sufficient numbers of Māori, Pacific, Asian and low income participants so that you can facilitate analysis by priority groups. You also need to plan to run the interventions for long enough to monitor long term behaviour change so that we can grow our understanding in that area. And it's also important to undertake things like target audience research and message testing as well as collecting information on cost and economic endpoints. So that's the end of my presentation. I just want to acknowledge the peer reviewers of the snapshot and also Kiri Milne who um, conducted the initial literature review that the snapshot was based upon. Um, after the webinar we'll be having the snapshot available on the ANA website and we'll also be promoting that link throughout our e-updates. So that is me and now I'm going to hand over the reins to Robin to share some specific research that she's been conducting in this area. So bear with us while I change the presenter role. I think I can hear you there Robin. So. We know the audio is working. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Great. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'll just get my my screen going. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Now, so can you see my slides? As Perfect. Well? Perfect. Start away. Great. Great. So, hi everyone. And, uh, thanks very much for this opportunity. And what I'm going to do today is a very quick, uh, once over, lightly of. Um, of some of our research in the National Institute for Health Innovation on mobile health. And I've just lost my screen. Have you got it? Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Perfect. I don't know what happened there. Okay, so here we'll give it a go now. So I think uh, Julia has done a really nice setup of why we have uh, started looking at the use of mobile communications technology in this area for supporting healthy behaviour change. So I'm not going to go over this too much. Perhaps one extra point uh, that we have found uh, internationally and hopefully in New Zealand as well, that mobile communications and mobile phones is actually a really good way to also reach the traditionally disadvantaged or priority populations who may not be accessing health services and health information in other ways. So it could potentially be a really good way to uh, reach into those populations. Populations. The benefits of using mobile phones is that in the pocket and in the handbag you have this device, sorry, having problems with my computer, have this device that is uh, connected, it's personal and it's portable and that means that the programs we deliver can be very much uh, integrated into people's daily lives without us having to do anything to make that happen. It means we can deliver programs in a very proactive way so we can send the messages out to people, hopefully uh, at the right times that are going to help them in terms of supporting their healthy behaviour change. And although we do it on a mass scale, it can be very much personalised to those individuals provided in a very interactive and ongoing way and using their social support network because that's basically what their mobile phone is. So we think mobile programs are ideal for supporting healthy behaviour change and probably also for supporting self-management of long-term conditions. 
So our research, we have been applying our expertise in behaviour change and the evidence of what has been effective for the different issues that we have been addressing and we've been trying to apply those to the unique benefits of mobile which as I've said is these devices that are personal, portable and connected. Uh, we've been developing mobile phone based interventions and then conducting high quality research trials on them. And this all started with smoking cessation. So my uh, previous boss, Professor Anthony Rogers, uh, developed STOMP, which was a text messaging smoking cessation support program. And this was the first ever published randomised control trial of an intervention delivered solely by text messaging. It was published in 2005 in Tobacco Control. And we showed in a national RCT that it doubled the short term quit rates. Uh, and that was, you know, whichever way you looked at it. Uh, so on the basis of that, we were able to work with the Ministry of Health and the Quick Group to implement this as a free national service. So uh, this is a very old slide, some people may have seen before, but it just outlines the smoking cessation support service. Uh, people receive personalised text message advice based on effective brief intervention messages that were being given at the time. They had a countdown to their self-selected quit day and then uh, an intense period of a month after quit day where they were received up to five or six messages a day with advice on how to beat cravings, uh, other things to do to, that had been proven to be effective in supporting uh, quitting smoking. And the program went for six months. <clears throat> oh, okay, something very strange is going on with my slides. Uh, so, the and as I said, that we showed that the short-term quit rates at six weeks doubled, and that was no matter who we looked at in the population, no matter which way we cut the population, including how addicted they were to nicotine at the start, uh, for all groups, uh, Maori and non-Maori, uh, we showed a, a doubling of quit rates, which is great. Um, as I said, that was implemented by the Quick Group for around four or five years. It was running as an adjunct to other services, so people could either uh, take up the text equip program on its own, or they could do it in conjunction with the other Quick Group services, such as subsidised NRT. Uh, at the same time, we were doing a trial of it in the United Kingdom. We worked with the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine uh, to, to adapt the messages for the United Kingdom and then we delivered the intervention out of our office here in Tamaki in Auckland to 5,800 participants across the UK. And again the results showed uh, this uh, significant doubling of quit rates, this time long term quit rates at six months and biochemically verified as being quitters. So this uh, program has been taken up in a lot of other places now. We've licensed it to a health IT company who are delivering it in the US and we're doing some work uh, on it, research work as a workplace wellness program in the Philippines and Argentina and we're just starting a project looking at whether this program may be appropriate for countries in the Pacific. So that bit of work uh, led us to develop our approach to developing mobile based programs that um, we have published. Uh, trying to emphasise the importance of evidence and a theoretical basis uh, to the interventions using behaviour change theory and behaviour change techniques uh, involving end users from the beginning of the process all the way through the development and the evaluation. Now the importance of continuing to iterate and improve the program, considering how it might be implemented from the start, if it's shown to be effective and undertaking high quality research studies. So we've been applying that approach to, to many other programs since then and I'm going to tell you just about a couple of them. A HEART study, um, uh, Ralph Madison is the principal investigator of this study, some of you may know him, uh, is a program around, uh, a program for cardiovascular disease patients to support them in the exercise. So uh, we know that exercise is a very important part of cardiac rehabilitation. Uh, but people are often a little bit wary about starting exercise and often fail to maintain it. This program um, identified some of those barriers around traditional cardiac rehab and applied our framework and uh, developed a program and then trialled that in a randomised control trial. So the program um, was based a lot around self-efficacy theory and 
it was delivered by a fully automated program of text messages, uh, such as this one here, based on behavior change techniques, uh, a, an initial face-to-face -face exercise prescription for each individual, and then the text messages tried to maintain that motivation and to increase the exercise over the time period. Uh, there's also a website uh, part of this program which involved role model video messages. Uh, those are some of the role models there from the videos. So the randomized control trial had 171 participants in it. Uh, it didn't actually find a statistically significant difference in the physiological measure of fitness, which was the primary outcome. But you can see there the behavioral outcomes, the secondary outcomes, there was significant increases in self-efficacy, in leisure time, physical activity, in walking, reduced sitting times, and general health as well. So that was a rather successful program. Another one we've been working on since then is called Horizon. So this is a weight management program. Uh, we worked with uh, Cleona Nimurku is the uh, principal investigator of this study, and we worked with the researchers in the United Kingdom and Australia to take a proven effective group session program called uh, WAP and turn the successful elements of that into a program that could be done remotely using technology. Uh, so we used the evidence to start with about the aspects of this program that were thought to be most important, which was a lot around self-monitoring of behaviour, prompting intention formation, promoting short-term goal setting, and providing feedback on progress and review of goals. But it was very much a team approach where we introduced the team of researchers and why they were working on this uh, so in order to personalise it a little bit further. Uh, and this is some of the team here, you'll recognise Cleona there. Uh, so the program involved text messaging, uh, an automated program of uh, pre-scheduled text messages, plus also the ability to ask an expert by text message. Also a hard copy toolkit with practical suggestions and information on what the short-term goals could be and how to achieve them. And via the internet, a uh, self-review of progress in terms of a step count, which they could text in and then we would graph on the website, same with their progress on their goals. And they could see how they were doing over time, they could also compare themselves to the average of the group. There was also a blog where both researchers and participants could uh, chat about successful um, programs. So sorry, I just skipped over that a bit quickly, but uh, we completed a pilot with 50 people. Uh, it wasn't powered to show a statistical significant difference in weight, although we did see some very positive indications on that, and also received very positive feedback from the participants, which is helping us to further refine the program around uh, all of the aspects that they found to be useful, uh, which was a lot to do with the text messages and also the very practical advice for the things that they liked. So just very quickly, a couple of new programs. This one, uh, we're only just getting started on. It will be a text message program for pregnant women and their families and families of preschool children based around healthy nutrition and healthy activity for both uh, the mother and child. And that will be delivered via text messages. This is a program uh, with a consortium of community-based organizations across the Waitemata and Auckland DHB districts just getting started now. Another project that we have been doing with Waitemata DHB is around self-management support tools for people with diabetes, where we have tried to identify where are the gaps currently for people uh, needing more support for self-management <coughs> and for management in the community. And where there are existing tools, we've been introducing those. And where there are no appropriate tools, we've been looking at developing them, such as text messaging programs, uh, but also other technologies, uh, such as a tablet-based application and uh, video conferencing. So that is very quick, uh, once over lightly, of some of the research that we have been doing.